Bordeaux for the Ashkenazi audience. Semanada Buena for our visitors from Turkey. Many of them visiting us tonight. I think that uh, there is a huge token of gratitude to be given to Michael Ben Melech. And obviously all the sponsors and the volunteers of the Lighthouse to that project that makes this valuable program alive, but especially for the extra effort in all aspects of setting up, coordinating, and providing magnificent shiurim, especially with the visit of the great rabbi Shalom Arush, that uh, in a couple of more hours, the rabbi will be traveling down to Mexico City, Be'ezat Hashem, for a series of lectures. But, as we heard before, we are in for a magnificent night, and I'd like to take also the opportunity to invite everyone that is here. The rabbi tomorrow will be honored by giving my class at the Edmond J. Safra Synagogue right here in Aventura, the class scheduled to begin at approximately 9 a.m. after the last minyan. So I don't know how late we're gonna to finish tonight, but if you're able to come, please feel comfortable to come and enjoy and say goodbye to the great rabbi. And we're looking forward by Zat Hashem uh, for a near future visit. We spent Shabbat with the rabbi and we heard great, great, magnificent and inspiring words of Torah, which I believe uh, tonight it will be equally, if not even uh, greater. So without being, all that being said, once again, Michael, Chazak Baruch, where is Michael? I'm sure that his mother is watching from Gan Eden. And I'm sure that his father-in-law, my dear friend, Menachem Mendel Ben Elchanan, Mendy Goring, also is watching from Gan Eden. He was an active member of this beautiful institution. And Mendy himself, as we heard on Thursday night with Michael, actually Mendy, <coughs> built many mikves and synagogues, and he also built our own ladies' mikveh, dish mikveh, and a second floor new bed midrash. And as Michael mentioned, the emuna aspect took over his life to the point that the name of his company was changed from whatever name he had to emuna construction. He lived, breathed, and smelled emuna. so Hashem takes the good ones and in early times, I'm sure that both of them, each one in a different place of Gan Eden, is, are watching down to see how the family and descendants are keeping the beautiful legacy of Torah Mitzvot and Mahasim Tovi. Without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Hazan Shalom Arush to begin Motsai Shabbat. May the man be special. With the Yahweh and Aviza Kudleto.
בעל הבית, שאמרנו שאני אומר תודה לאבא שם על החשמל, והבן שאין אצלו. אז הוא אומר, אתה יודע מה? אתה צודק. שבועיים היה להם חשמל, והיה שנגים, אז היו צריכים לעזוב את הבית, אז לא יכולים כבר, לא יכולים להיות בתוך הבית. ואתה צודק, צריכים להגיד תודה רבה על החשמל. רבי פריור היה להגיע למיאמי, ‫הוא היה לו כמה ימים בטורונטו, ‫והוא היה בבית של מישהו, ‫והרבי, כמו שאתה אומר, ‫תודה רבה על השם של האלקטריסטיה. ‫והחוס היה מסתכל על הרבי, ‫והוא אומר, ‫אני חושב שאני מסתכל על הרבי, ‫בגלל שלא היה לנו אלקטריסטיה ‫לשתי שבועות, ‫היה באמת שנוסטורם, ‫פריזי פול, ‫והוא היה צריך להגיע לבית. ‫ורק אם הלילה חזרה, ‫הם היו יכולים להגיע לבית ‫ולהגיע לבית. ‫אז הם היו צריכים להגיע לבית. The thankful, the thank you statement is not limited to electricity. It also includes the water department as well and the gas. Is a person should even be thankful to a ship that has a chair to sit. Perhaps if we don't say thank you, maybe we shouldn't sit on the chair. At the end of the day, nothing that we have belongs to us. Even the chair, it has a godly essence and a godly ownership. So the fact that we use it something that belongs to Akadosh Baruch Hu, the least that we can do is thank you Hashem for the chair that we have to sit on. If a person looks around the life, for every matter that comes across our life, there is a token of gratitude to Hashem. Can you imagine giving a lecture of this magnitude without a microphone? אדם צריך לדעת כל דבר שנמצא בעולם ושייך לבורא עולם. אתה משתמש בו ואין תודה. The person needs to know that if the matter has the power and the privilege of being an actual matter or item in life, it means that godliness is part of it. If godliness is part of it, that's the least that a person needs to know to express their thank you to Hashem. מי שלא יכול להגיד תודה, סמא שעשה לו אמונה. אז לכן צריך לבוא להגיד לשם, תן לי אמונה. אהההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
the rabbi mentioned that there is a reality. For example, there is a reality that we're standing here and we have a pulpit in front of us. And maybe sometimes a person say, I don't believe that there is a pulpit. But that belief cannot counter attack the concept that there is a pulpit, something physical, something tangible that we are able to use and we are able to lean on. <laughs> So if somebody would tell us, no, there is no pulpit, what are you going to say? You're crazy. I mean, the pulpit is here. Look, touch it, feel it, sense it. And the person knows that the faith is not just a person who is a person who is a person who is a person who is a person the reality is that a person with a muna knows that Hashem exists, a person with a muna believes in the Torah, a person with a muna understands that everything that happens in the world is directed by Yekadosh Baruch Hu. This is the reality of the person's life. One of the basic principles of Emunah is whatever Hashem does is good. There is no evil, there is no bad. It may appear bad in our eyes, but whatever Hashem does is good. Why the person sometimes thinks that things are going bad? The reason is, or part of the reason is, when a person believes that the life in the physical world is the main purpose of life. But a person who thinks that this is actually very far from understanding what is the purpose even of the creation of the world. The top or not? The rabbi is asking a question for the entire audience. Something that brings the person closer to God. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Good. Good. The rabbi didn't hear. Can you say it again? Good. Almost good. 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 <laughs> the rabbi said he would like to hear the word good that can wake up the entire country. Good. Good. <laughs> if that's what a person understands, the things that brings us closer to Hashem are actually good. So even the setbacks, like the Rabbi mentioned, medical conditions, children, marriage, are actually good because they bring the person closer to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Because the Baruch Hu, the name of the Baruch Hu is the Baruch Hu. The Torah Matova, the Baruch Hu, the Baruch Hu, the Baruch Hu. The person comes to the understanding that every situation in life has the power and the potential to bring the person closer to Hashem, which is the ultimate purpose of the person's creation, of Hashem's creation of the world, and a person being created to connect themselves to Hashem.
אספר לך, אצלכם, דבר, מעשה שלא מזמן זה קרה, מעשה אמיתי, זה לא, לא, זה מציאות, זה מעשה מציאותי, אפשר לדבר על זה. אז היה פה באמריקה יהודי, היה עשיר, מצביע, וכמובן הוא לא חשבה תכלית, אבל מצביע. הוא היה יושב לך בגלל שהוא רצה לדבר מתנה גדולה, מה עשה? וכאן לאט לאט הציע לעשות את הכסף עד שנייה, אין שום כסף. Someone in America that was in a certain stage of their life, blessed with a lot of success, but regretfully he didn't use that success to the proper way, and slowly the wheel of fortune turned, and this person literally lost everything that they had. We are too. We are too. אבל בזמן שעשו קיבל מתנה את הספר בגן Yes. 
שנקרא בדק, הבין שהוא הפקיד אותה את שלי. He was driving at night, heading home, very late at night, and he realized that he is running out of gas, so he stops by a gas station to fill up gas. He goes to the cashier, hands the debit card from the bank account, and he says, decline, car decline, car decline. He says, swipe it again, the car is declined. He checks on the bank online, I believe, and he sees that this fund of the Gemach deposit the check and empty the account. He started to become very upset, started to say all kinds of things. How was it possible? I begged him not to deposit the checks. How can he do such a thing? So suddenly when he's cursing out this fellow in his car at 2 o'clock in the morning, he suddenly realized one of the things that he read in the book, Kana Emuna, that if everything that happens in a person's life, Hashem is the manager and the sender, so why is he getting upset? And this fellow, and the rabbi added that every time a person gets angry about something, he's indirectly saying, Hashem is not involved, but actually goes against the principle that nothing happens without Hashem giving the green light for it to happen. Suddenly he had a change of hearts and started to apologize to God. Why did he why did he allow the situation to take over his essence? And he started suddenly to start expressing his gratitude to Hashem for his health for his wife, his marriage, even owning a vehicle, and thank God the business is flourishing slowly but surely. The rabbi mentions that we have heard this beautiful concept that the more thankfulness a person expresses or gratitude rather, a person expresses to Hashem, the gates of the heavens open widely to the person. He started to look for money. Sometimes people hide money and people put money on the glove compartment on the side, underneath of the seat. And he looked, he looked, he looked. He found like thirty dollars, which I believe allowed him to fill up the car with gasoline. So when the cashier in the gas station sees him, and I think it was at one, two o'clock in the morning, he says, what did it change? The car was declined several times. He said, I was looking for some money and I found. And then he started to shoot, started to talk with the attendant and tells them everything that happened with him in the past few months. And the attendant was very surprised and he says, with everything that you went, you went through, how can you be happy? How can you be content? How can you be calm? And this fellow says, because of faith in God, I have a good night, Hashem. So this uh, fellow, 
is talking to a cashier, which apparently was a Gentile person, and asked him, what, what is Amuna? So he explains, Amuna is believing God, that everything that happened is for good, and nothing happened without God's intervention, etc. So the cashier says, okay, I'm going to give you only 20. Because since you're talking about faith, let's put it to test. $20 in gas, and with the rest of the money that you have, buy a lot of the ticket that is a scratch-off. Then on the spot, you get the result. If you win or lose, you don't have to wait till Wednesday night, Powerball or Mega Ball. <laughs> on the spot, $50,000 in one of the lottery tickets. True story, the rabbi knows all the details. He knows the person that this miracle happened to. Ah, so the problem is here. 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 Ah, so the Let's apply the message of the story to our day-to-day life. Rabbi Shalom, we see that a person who has no faith is really difficult to live. Okay, if you just have the faith to live, it's like a man who is not 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 a man like a detrimental effect in the life of the person. If it's getting angry, easily, or God forbid, cursing, or acting in a ways which are not suitable for a Yehudi, for a person to act with a bit of demonization. He's like a person who had a rough day in the street, or a person that works, painting, mechanic, whatever the person work does, and comes home a bit sweaty and a bit dirty, and then the person goes home and takes a cha- shower and changes how refreshed the person feels. So is the emunah. The emunah refreshes the, the life and the soul of the person. A person must understand that even the story that the rabbi mentioned a few minutes ago, you can say, uh, what kind of story is this? The person check bounces, the credit card declined, got stuck in the middle of nowhere without gasoline, and you're telling me that all of this is good? Says that is the difference between having, having a muna and not having a muna. A person needs to understand. Hashem does things for the person that we don't understand why they are happening. Hashem also sees things that we don't see. We as humans have limited understanding and limited vision. But Hashem has extended vision and a better understanding of what is beneficial and what is necessary and what is going to be good for the person's life. Even that may appear that is detrimental for the person's life. כמה סיפורים אני יודע, אמיתיים, שאנשים קראו להם משהו רע, ומשם עשה להם איזשהו עוד. כמה אני יודע, אני יכול לספר לך רק סיפורים של השבועיים האחרים, ומה שקרה, אני מבין את זה כל הזמן, רק קרה 
משהו הכי רע, ומשם שאתה עושה לי משהו רע, 
Nous devons changer de comment nous devons. The person says to Hashem that if a person without living with a man, so there is a, conf, a concept of kefirah. Uh, kefirah means like a person really doesn't connect with the Shem. So if a person is not connected to the, with the Shem, what's the purpose of life? What's the meaning of life? What is the spirituality if godliness is missing from the life of the person? A moment that a person starts thinking or saying that whatever just happened to the person is bad, a person is showing definitely a lack of faith and belief in Hashem's existence and guiding our life. Now, why? There are three mistakes that people usually do. Number one, blaming themselves. Number two, blaming the neighbor, the relative, the in-laws, the brother, the husband, the wife. And number three, blaming nature. So if a person picks any of the three options given, so it means that God is out of the equation. And if God is out of the equation, it's like the person is saying indirectly, I don't believe in God's existence and intervention in my life. <laughs> the rabbi did mention this last Thursday night for those that were here. The rabbi mentioned that one of the biggest mistakes that a person does in their life is casting the blame on themselves and blaming themselves even for mistakes committed. And that also, it shows a definitely huge lack of a in the person's life. The person, even in the, in the challenging situations, or even if God forbid a person had a spiritual setback, understand that Hashem is with the person, and Hashem guides the person, and Hashem will lift the person up as well. I'll explain. One day, the rabbi's son, Nachman, uh, was given a ride by someone in Israel. And he says, do you know Rabbi Shalom Arush? He says, uh, no, why? He says, I would like to say thank you to him. He said, what did he do to you? So he says, for many years, he blamed his mother-in-law for whatever situation was experiencing in his life. It's a very common thing that people blame uh, the mother-in-law. I hope mine is not here tonight. <laughs> Hi, ma'am. Shabbat <laughs> All his suffering was, was because of his mother-in-law. <laughs> This fellow hated his mother-in-law so much that he decided to get rid of her. <laughs> <laughs> so 
בגלל שהצער הזה כבר ייגמר מאוד. be sitting in jail, but at least I know that the mother-in-law is resting a couple of feet on the ground. If now a person was able to arrive to the understanding and, and comprehension that Hashem is part of our life and without Hashem nothing happens, so then we can activate the next concept, which means that everything that Hashem does is for a good reason. <laughs> A person reaching that level will go to the next level of speaking openly to Hashem and says, Hashem, help me understand that everything that you do is for a good reason. And that develops the strong emunah between a person and a kadosh baruch. כשאדם באמת מבין את זה והוא רוצה להיות באמונה, הוא יכול להגיד תודה מכל הלב. Because a person who truly internalizes this idea of gratitude and understanding Hashem being part of our life will be able to achieve this great spiritual level 
of understanding that everything is from Hashem and everything that Hashem does is for a good reason. The person should try to develop a conversation with Hashem, talking to Hashem from the heart. Hashem, you created by me. Nahida, Hashem, you created me. Hashem, I your son. And I know that everything that you want is for good. Help me to see the goodness in everything that happens in our life. And that develops day after day a way that a person really develops a strong bonding with Hashem. She says, even when it comes to the concept of marriage, that a person wants to get married, and a person says to Hashem, I'm sure you want me to get married more than I want to get married. And a person says, and the fact that I'm not married is also from your part. And I say thank you to Hashem. And that helps develop to understand the person that even something so essential as marriage, it will happen at the proper time. And if it didn't happen until now, it's for a good reason. <laughs> Same thing when it comes to children. Obviously, parents want to have children. But a parent, for some reason, doesn't have children yet. A person prays to Hashem in the same way. I have no children because this is your will. But help me to have them, to raise them, to be healthy, to be happy, to be productive members of Am Yisrael. The person should speak to Hashem and understand that Hashem created the person for a purpose. And Hashem created the person believing in the goodness of the person. And as the person becomes more accustomed to this kind of conversation with Hashem, so then the words will start coming out in an easier way, and a person will slowly understand that whatever is going on in the life, even whatever did not happen, is for a good reason as well. <laughs> And one of the ultimate prayers that a person should pray to Hashem and help me to learn to be able to have a monai in you and to be able to love you. The rabbi is saying that the 
life with the Muna is that the person feels themselves in that heaven. And the opposite is the same. The life without the Muna is full of worries, full of fears, full of concerns. The person lives in a dark mode, so to speak. With the Muna, Hashem's light penetrates into the life of the person and gives the person like if he's in that heaven, in a, in a paradise, in a spiritual and emotional paradise. A person who wants to see salvation in the life should learn how to express the The rabbi tells a story about a young couple in Israel that the husband was sitting in Kalel for a few years and the other few children and the wife was working and bringing the main source of livelihood to the home. One day, regretfully, she was uh, removed from her position and now there is no income coming into the home. The husband, the Torah learner student, suddenly became very worried, very concerned, very sad, very depressed. How is he going to pay all his monthly obligation, all the bills that a, a couple, a parent, is to pay for the home? One time, one man, so this fellow started to slowly, he started in the past reading over the book of Tuda, the book of gratitude, and then he hit him and he says, Did they ever say thank you to God? for the many years of livelihood that the wife was able to bring? Was she is the one bringing? Or Hashem was sending the blessing through her? So if Hashem is sending the blessing through her, I need to express my gratitude to the sender, which is Hashem. He reached such a level to say, it was worth it, listen to the words, it was worth it for my wife, he says, to be fired from her job, for me to recognize my gratitude to the Almighty. Powerful statement, but the other side of the brain says, FPNL doesn't wait for a miracle, you have to pay the bill. You have to pay the mortgage, you have to pay the insurance. So now he has an inner struggle. Part of the brain says, thank you, God. Part of the brain says, where is the money? So the rabbi says that this young man finally decided I'm on God's side. Everything that happens is out of Hashem, but I'm going to go to the next level, the fellow says. I'm going to make a Sa'udat Bodha'a. I'm going to invest on my gratitude. I'm going to put 
my, my, the money where my mouth is, he says. I'm going to make a Sa'udat Bola'ah. Just to explain to the holy audience here, Sa'udat Bola'ah, it means a meal that a person makes in order to celebrate a miracle and to express gratitude for miracles that happen to the life. He invited all the friends of the Kolel from the yeshiva and everybody's asking, what are you making such an event of gratitude? He says, I will tell you when the right time comes. So at the end of the event, that everybody's so happy and, and having a great meal and singing songs to Hashem and saying words of Torah and saying Nishma, the beautiful prayer of gratitude. And finally he says, the reason why I'm making this celebration is to say thank you God that my wife was fired from her job. Beautiful. The happy ending of the story was that exactly a week later she found a job better paying than the original job. <laughs> Two things he achieved. Number one, that he was able to reunite and to develop his emuna and with the heart in Hashem. And Hashem responded with generosity to a new position that the wife was in. The Rabbi mentions about a synagogue in his neighborhood in Jerusalem and a great rabbi with a certain challenge that the rabbi had five sons and none of them were married and they were reaching the critical age of 30 years and up and every time he saw the rabbi he would ask the rabbi, Rabbi, what do I do? I mean, what's going on? Give me a segula, open the doors, tell me what to do to see my children walking under the chuppah. My this rabbi took upon himself to go every day to the Kever of Rachel, which I believe the Kahal knows that Shabbat that just finished was the Hilula, was the Yorzai of Rachel Menu Alea Shalom. And as we speak, there are thousands upon thousands of people that are in Kever Rachel. Obviously, now in Israel it's 6 a.m., but I'm sure that earlier tonight there were thousands of people. And this rabbi went every day to open his heart to Hashem that in the merit of Rachel Menu, his children find a suitable Shidduchim. So one day, the rabbi calls all his sons and he says, come home tonight, I am making a Sa'udat Oda'a, I am making a Thanksgiving celebration, and without the turkey, okay? Maybe I hope when you're going to Thanksgiving, Maggie, I'll come as you want. How do you say Oda'a? And the rabbi, the children are asking, what are we making such an unexpected event? Don't Did you eat a lot of, I mean, what, did we buy a new house? What's going on? So finally, the rabbi, after much pressure, and singing and words of Torah, finally the father says, I'm expressing my gratitude to the Almighty that none of you are married as of now. And then they give Now they became shocked, they felt offended. <laughs> and for this you celebrate that we're not married? <laughs> we are crying non-stop that we single. <laughs> Uh, 
מזמן רוצים לעשות לך ישועה, ואתה לא אומר מילה. That night Rachel Imeno came to the, this rabbi in a dream, and he says to Rachel Imeno, says to this fellow, to this rabbi, for a very long time the heavens are waiting to send you the salvation for all your children, but there is a missing signature in the application for Shiduchim, that you never say thank you to Hashem for whatever is going on in your life. That's here four of the five got married. No, no, they got married, not engagement, not dating a long time. They all got married, four of them, within the year. At the end of the Shiva, one of the sons shared publicly the story with his father and his siblings. The rabbi said definitely reading from the books, from the books of gratitude and the many beautiful books that are available outside for the Kahal. Definitely to speak to Hashem, as the rabbi mentioned so eloquently earlier tonight, but definitely the rabbi said, a person wants to invest, I'm going to add my two cents, in an IPO, so to speak, do a sa'udat hoda'a, to, to be thankful to Hashem for whatever we have and for whatever we don't have. Make it a habit, the rabbi said, and obviously changes don't happen overnight, but make it a habit to be thankful to Hashem, count your blessings in the positive things and even in the seemingly negative things. Because even the negative, we learned tonight, that it has a positive aspect. And the ultimate will be good, even though the good may not be seen today. The rabbi quoted a very powerful statement from the Bina Tan of Dresden that if the person and the Jewish people will say thank you to Hashem even for the negative situations of life, all the dramas, all the tragedies, even exile, long time ago could have been part of history. A Mashiach could have been here already. For sure, the more gratitude and positive things come down to the life of the person, especially the gratitude aspect of it, for sure that can cancel a lot of the negative decrees that, that, decrees that are roaming around the world. Guarantee that if gratitude opens the doors for marriage, for health, for children, for shikukim, for shalabai, for parnasa, for whatever need that person has. A lady came to see the rabbi yesterday that she came to him a year ago crying out to the rabbi that regretfully she is a lady named Abuna. 
Aguna, it's a, it's a, it's a unfortunate situation when a husband does not give a get a divorce document according to Jewish law. That lady, Aguna, means chain. She cannot date, she cannot go out because she's technically married, but she's not married. אז אמרתי לה, חצי שעה יום תגידי תודה לך, אשר שאלמונה. תוך שלושה דברים כזה שקיבלתי את הפינה. She reported to the great rabbi that after the rabbi, the rabbi gave her an advice and it says, you need to change your strategy. Stop crying, stop worrying. Say thank you to Hashem, you know what you are doing, you know what's the best for me. Three months later, she got the gift from her husband and she showed the rabbi the document from the Bedin allowing her to date. <laughs> Once she changed her mind, for many years she was cursing the husband, blaming the husband, being sad, depressed, feeling bad about the whole situation. The moment that she twitched, she switched the music and saying, Hashem, you know what you are doing. God, you know what you are doing. God says, let me handle it for you. And <laughs> סיפור עכשיו בשביל יש יהודי שיושב פה באמריקה, בבית סוהר. וכל פעם הוא מתקשר לעיניי, שאני אדבר איתו, ואני אומר סיפור. עכשיו בשביל קוד, הוא מספר לנו, הביאו לידו שכן שלו, יהודי. יהודי, שצריך לשבת עשרים שעה בסוהר. The rabbi has been in contact for several years with a Jew in America that regretfully is in jail. And uh, he always calls the rabbi just to hear the rabbi's voice and words of encouragement. And recently, this fellow says to the rabbi that his cellmate is another Jew that regretfully was given 20 years in jail in the United States. <laughs> בוא, בוא, יש עכשיו עושים לחצר. הוא אומר, לא, 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 It's uh, saying, but okay, you can put the Tehillim down. Let's go out, we have an hour in the gym. We have an hour business. No, he says, I'm waiting for a very important phone call. He says, phone call? You're in jail, you don't get phone calls. Usually you make phone calls, collect. That's how the system works. and need your money in advance in the, in the phone system. He says, no, did you file for an appeal? No, do you have a hearing? No, do you have any attorney coming to bail you out? No, so what kind of phone call are you waiting for? אומר לה, הייתי אומר, מה היה עושה? היה אומר את כל התהילים, ויושב ואומר, איזה חדישה טובה. נותן שהוא בבית זוהר, אני רואה שזה עכשיו עשרה תשעה, עשרים שנה, ואומר את התהילות, עוד פעם את כל הזמן, ככה. So this fellow, every day, in jail, will finish the book of the evening, literally 150 chapters from the book of Psalm, and then will express his gratitude to God, thank you God for being in jail, thank you God for being in 20 year sentence, I mean, We laugh, but she can forbid, you know, and this is how this fellow lived every day. And the next day, I was going to say something. And I said, I'm going to go. And I said, I'm going to go. A month and a half ago, President Trump signed his presidential pardon. 
and he was released from captivity. The rabbi said it's a guaranteed concept. Even matters that affect the health of the, the mind of the person, the rabbi just briefly mentioned about a family that regretfully has a daughter with mental conditions and the parents took upon themselves to start saying gratitude and being thankful to Hashem even for this challenging situation, the daughter had a complete refuah shalina. The rabbi mentioned also that there is a guaranteed return that the more a person expresses their thankfulness and gratitude to Hashem, that God doesn't leave any invoice unpaid or unpaid. God takes care of it at the proper time. If the Bible encourages the Kahal, take some of the books, take some of the CDs, listen to them, try to apply it to your life, activate some of the things that we learned tonight, and Thursday night, the topic of gratitude, this topic of sublating ourselves. And the rabbi repeated three or four times in the last few minutes, guaranteed return. Not many things in life have a guaranteed return. Even when a person invests investment, they tell you, can succeed or God forbid the opposite. But in a case like this, that a person says, God, I know it's you. I know you are the sender. I know that you know what's the best for me. I know everything that you do is for good. Guaranteed that what Allah will step up to the plate and send the salvation to the person, whatever situation it may be. Friday. The Gentile. The Gentile drove three hours to see the rabbi in front the Gentile that came and non-stop was thanking the rabbi for the beautiful lessons, the magnificent books. And he says, since I started to read, especially the books of gratitude, my life became paradise. My life became an The rabbi is looking for partners to how to spread the beautiful words of gratitude and emuna. And the rabbi guarantees that everyone that learns these ideas of life would see good things and success in their life. The rabbi is not, and I can tell you from personal experience, it is not on a fundraising trip. For him to fundraise, he doesn't need to leave Israel. I 
to live with his shiva, his family, his yes, students, yes, yes, yes. but yes. 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 they have the Rabbi has a whole yes. entourage yes. Of, 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 of Torah learning centers, etc. He's here for one mission: how to help the world develop the emuna and gratitude in a kadosh.
The rabbi is looking for ambassadors. That's to summarize the final few moments that the rabbi mentioned. He's looking for ambassadors that are willing to partner with him in spreading this beautiful message of Emunah and gratitude to Hashem. I said this at the Shabbat table that we have the honor and the privilege of having lunch with the great rabbi that in our synagogue any groom or bride, a groom and bride obviously, that get married, my wife gives them the book of the ladies and I give them the, the, the books of the men and even myself. I said this the other day, it helped our marriage, it helped our life. So take advantage of the great opportunity that we have. Not many synagogues, or not many communities, or not many cities of the world have what we have tonight. So the great Mary, that the great rabbi travels all over in order to give us the opportunity. And by Zat Hashem, the Kahal will respond accordingly. We'd like to wish everybody a Shavuah Tov. Thank you so much. We want to just make a few more announcements for the lights are down. Um, if I might have done that. 
יש כלל בעולם הזה, מי שעושים שירה כזבובו, בשביל הילדים שלי, בשביל הילדים שלי, הוא יציל את הילדים שלי. ועכשיו הם מתקבלים עוד ממש. כל הזמן, מישהי באה אליי לקרוא לו כוחה. אמר על הילדים שלנו, אבל בואו תעשי בשביל הילדים שלי. אני מבטיח לך, אני יודע שאני אראה 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 To a Muna, to a Granny, to an Abu Hashem. So we wish to the Rabbi Shabu Ato. We'll help the Rabbi as much as we can with the books. Tomorrow morning, Rabbi final speech at our synagogue at around 9 a.m. And then the Rabbi will be traveling to Mexico, Lindo, and then Hashem. And from there, we'll be traveling to different parts of the world. Shabu Ato, and once again to the Lighthouse of the Rabbi Ojo. And Michael and Melech, and all the sponsors, and everyone that made this beautiful night. Thank you. Please come up. We have some announcements. Just everybody, the rabbi will be in the lobby, and you'll be giving him brachas and blessings. I highly recommend you wait in line. It's, it's worth it. I've heard a lot, a lot of stories already from last year with all the brachas that he gives, and Baruch Hashem, that's one thing I wanted to say. Um, the books in general, uh, they are still for sale, of course. I'm buying 20. If anybody wants to get extra books, feel free to come up to me. I'm happy to give any of them whatever I have. Um, for anybody who would like to just get some books anyways. And uh, finally, uh, tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, the Rav will be praying at the Beit, uh, sorry, at the Safa Synagogue in Aventura. What time is it? Class and breakfast. Class and breakfast at nine o'clock in the morning at the Safa Synagogue. Also, and the Nate's minion will be at 5.45 minion at the New Preston Center in Aventura. And also, if you want to read the books in general, they're always there at the Preston Center in Aventura as well. Thank you very much, everybody. Shavu Atel. We'll see you next time in the Lighthouse Park. One more announcement from the President of Israel. We came and flew here. And I want to thank my wife, my family, the Ralph's family, the Orish family for allowing us to come here. Big Messias Nefesh, we have big families in the Arab. And to come away from Yushalayim and from the Rav, from his Kahila and Kodesh, just think about it a little bit, show appreciation, and follow us online, and us our future, Mesa of Israel, and share all our posts, please. There's a Buddha, and this will be gone. We have books, but we can share what's happening online. So purchase the books and also share online. We go together, both things. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful week. It's a good time.